Welcome back viewers to episode 54 of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. Uh, when we last left off, we uh, continued talking to some people around the camp. And we're going to keep doing that in this episode, getting to know our party members some more. Uh, once again, did do a little bit of selling, bought some poultices, injury kits, and sold some stuff. Also bought a backpack that uh, increases my inventory by 10, which is nice. So, we're going to let Liliana here spin us a tale. Yes? Something you need? Yes, there is. Yes? What's on your mind? You are traveling minstrel. Minstrel? Do you have tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. I agree. Let's have some story time. Uh, tell me about the Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Yeah, but uh, I don't really believe any of that chanted crap, but uh, all right, do you know any stories from Orle? Of course, Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Orle. Okay, um, that sounds interesting. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. What a jerk. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield the sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Hmm. Well, continue. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. Well, that certainly wouldn't be right. All on, women must stay in the kitchen. Discovered. I'm just kidding, viewers. I don't, I don't, I'm not that sexist. Hmm, so did she win the tourney? Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Okay. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Dramatic. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. Ouch. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I was hoping for a happy ending. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. Hmm. Alright, you know any Ferelden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? 
um, it's uh, Morgan's mother, right? Uh, are you sure? Was she the Flemeth of legend? Um, Flemeth, the devourer of men. I'm uh, sorry, what? Flemeth, mother of witches. Maybe? Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mist. It, it, she was sort of an old woman. Uh, yeah, she looked like your average old woman. Well, if Flemeth really exists, she would be very, very old indeed. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Hmm. But Flemeth was once beautiful? Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyeva, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Scandalous. Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the chasing tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. That's awkward. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyeva, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's <laughs> eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The loss of Flemeth's humanity melted away. And at dawn, yeah. she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men. And with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. So, Morrigan? Ugh. Well, alright, well, that has been Let's Play Storytime with Liliana. You only approve plus two. You're ridiculous. Well, let's go see how Morrigan feels about all this. Mora Strippin'. Yes? I'd like to ask you something. If you must. Uh, is Flemeth really what she seems to be? <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? Hmm. A powerful Malif Maleficar. You mean, is she truly the Flemeth of legend and story? Yes, that's what Tell I mean. Me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the Chastens still tell of my mother? to frighten them into obedience. Uh, well, I'm more interested in the truth. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. Hmm. All right, that sounds interesting. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful, a fair lass in a land of barbarian men. The desire of any who saw her. Right, okay. So, yeah, I've heard this part. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osen the Bard, and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In hmm. truth, my mother claims that t'was Osen who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous Lord, who looked on from afar. 
Lord Conobar approached young Osen and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osen agreed. He sold his wife to another man? The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. Yeah, right. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. What? <laughs> All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. Hmm. She spoke of to spirits or demons? Spirits first, and twas they who slew Conobar. Flemeth did not turn to the demon until much later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. Which? He never invaded, or he never defeated her? The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner, and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people, and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Oh. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. Hmm. So do you believe her version? I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Often it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. Hmm. Okay. Uh, legend tells of Flemeth having many daughters? You ask if I have sisters. I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds, after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that, too. Hmm. All right, well, an interesting story, thank you. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious, nevertheless. Hmm. Well, my mother's a useless drunk, if you must know. Oh, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Yeah. Which is very little, I am certain. Yeah, it's not it matters very much. not. Let us move on. Okay. All right, this has been Let's Play Story Time with everyone. Uh, join in next episode, but we'll finish up camp and stuff. Uh, we will be on our way. So make sure to tune in next time, viewers.